we're continuing to read from the color complex <clears throat> and like you I decided to finish this section out not today but oh actually I might be able to finish it out today <clears throat> it's way at the end um, and it's called divided families and friends that's the chapter I'm reading from so let's get going let's go <clears throat> while many college students cling to friends who mirror their own coloring there are expectations for example a black woman let me read that again. For example, a black woman we'll call Audrey says that among her four best friends in college, three women and the man we'll call Greg, skin color ranged across the spectrum and that as a group, they either ignored or joked about their color differences. Still, one of the friends, a brown skinned woman we'll call Kim, could never join fully in the joking. The subject of the color was too emotional, emotionally raw for her. Audrey described what happened one day in her dorm room when all five friends were present. Greg was doing his usual flirting, going around the room saying stuff like, come here my spicy cinnamon princess, here's my ebony queen, and this is my vanilla fantasy. But when he got to Kim, she was glaring at him and so he decided to skip over her. Later when Kim overheard that Greg had called her a fat funky black bitch for being so uptight about her color, Things were never quite the same again between them. I don't know why he would call her that. I didn't. Color distinctions also characterize certain black fraternities and sororities as discussed in chapter two and may subtly influence the selection of black beauty queens or black or, or beauty queens. Historically, homecoming queen at black colleges and universities were nearly always light skinned, but now dark skinned campus queens are becoming the norm. Yet, when a black woman is elected homecoming queen on a predominantly white campus, she is invariably light-skinned. Presumably, color is less of an issue in the friendships of those in their 20s and beyond than it is during the cliquish, peer-obsessed years of high school and college. Yet, color and features do sometimes influence same-sex relationships among mature adults, especially women. The closest black woman friends are still, the closest black women friends are still more often than not of similar color coloring. Perhaps because women prefer friends who are more or less of equal status in terms of their attractiveness and desirability to men. Men, however, less invested in their physical appearance tend to compete over occupational success and money and are likely to form their friendships on that common ground. It happens true. Of course, but although most black men I know are not stable, so I don't know. Of course, some black women of radically different skin colors do transcend such concerns. One very light-skinned black nurse in her late 20s who worked at a hospital in upstate New York describes what happened when she was transferred to a new department headed by a dark-skinned female supervisor. On the first day of work, I thought to myself, I better start looking now for a new job because this dark-skinned woman is, is going to hate me. They always do. I stuck it out, though, and then one night my boss and I both had to work late. We got to talking and discovered we had something in common, being fed up with the skin color issue. We shared our respective pain about being too dark and too light. And for the first time, we were both able to laugh about all this color crap. We have been best friends ever since. Still, when we go out together, we often get those weird looks. Strangers even come up to us and ask, what in the world do you two have in common? To their credit, these two women have not let the rudeness of strangers interfere with their friendship. Yet, a letter to the Ebony advisor from a 27-year-old light-skinned black woman tells another story. This woman had gone to a club one evening with a darker-skinned girlfriend and had been approached several times by black athletes and businessmen, while her girlfriend was approached only once. When she commented on all this attention, the dark-skinned friend said defensively, the guys were blind to pass over the guys were blind to pass over a beautiful cocoa brown chick for a pale yellow girl. 
The first woman retorted, among other things, that lighter-skinned women were born to dominate chocolate brown ones. And the only black men brown women get are the leftovers we don't want. The darker-skinned friend has not spoken to her since. And the woman was writing to, to ask what she could say to make her dark-skinned friend forgive her. The ebony advisor had this stern reply. You owe an apology to millions of black people, including undoubtedly many of your own past and present relatives, who happen to be a few shades darker than you are. That a difference in skin color could destroy a friendship between two black women is disturbing, but it is also understandable in a society that is both racist and sexist. Women, regardless of racial background, are judged by how they look. And for black women, good looks are still likely to be defined by the lightness of their skin. Light-skinned black women are in demand among most black men, especially men who are darker, because of the possibility they offer of lightening the line. Add to this the shortage of marriageable black men, and many black women feel as if they are competing in a seller's market. The situation divides friends and disrupts families, especially uh, when parents put pressure on their children to marry particular types. Such, as, such an erosion of close relationships might be prevented if black men and women were to explore together the role of color in their lives. <clears throat> All this is true, but the weird thing about this is when they say There's, not, there's a shortage of marriageable black men. No one ever wants to deal with why. No one ever wants to stop them from taking us and throwing us in cells. And I've never been arrested just by luck. And, you know, I've worked not to, but also a lot of luck. Um, no one wants to stop them from putting black boys in special ed. No one wants to stop them from... from, from um, pushing this you only a man if you get if you can provide for your family in a society that's going to make sure you can't provide see this is the problem and then if you worked on those things you would have more eligible black men but nobody really cares to fix the problems they just want to say well it's not a lot of marriageable black men so what are we going to do well let's figure out why there's not and let's fix that. It's the only thing I got to say. And if you have sons, that's what you should be doing. Um, good thing, though, after 2020, the problem will be solved one way or the other. Because either we'll black people will get ourselves together. That's one option. And take our seat back at the table of humanity with all the other groups. Talk about black Americans. Will die out as a group, and whoever's left will just get adopted into other ethnic groups, um, or other ethnic groups will just take us, the best of us, and the well, that's the same thing. We'll just take us all in individually, but I'm sure they'll just take the best of us, and the rest will again die. And if you don't think that that's true, you think that that's too exaggerated. 3,500 people a day are dying just from pandemic. A, 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 a large portion of that is black because it affects us disproportionately. So when you add up the deaths from childbirth to babies and mothers, diabetes, strokes, heart attacks, which in my circle, I've seen four heart attacks in the last three years. And I'm 49. Some of these people were in their 40s. So you got heart attacks, strokes, you got cancers, you got all these things. If you think black people are going to survive that, on top of all the stresses that are coming because we don't have our fair share and we don't have the justice that you need to be a, a human being, you're crazy. So I suggest... And I'm working as hard as I can for us to get ourselves together and take our seats back at the table of humanity. That's where I'm coming from. And I hope you are too. Thank you for your support.
Um, take care of your mind, take care of your body, and stay safe.